doing 34, 35, 36. Throttle is wide open, 38, 39, 40 miles an hour. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things. Today I've got an exclusive look at a brand new e-bike for you guys. And this one isn't even available at the time that I'm filming this video. This bike is going to be available in a little while here on Indiegogo and I'm going to give you guys as much information about this thing as I can right now but I will also leave a link for the Indiegogo campaign in the description down below so you can find out some more information for yourself. Now right off the bat this bike came mostly assembled. I did have to install the bars and the front tire. I did take it for a quick spin around the block so I do have just one mile on the bike right now. And I can already tell you that this thing is an absolute beast. It's packed with a lot of features that I've never really seen on some other e-bikes in the past and I'm excited to give you guys a first look at this thing. So today we're taking a look at the Kakuka Rampage Pro. Now I'm saying that this bike is a beast because it is very large, probably one of the larger e-bikes that I've ever tested here on the channel. It has a really cool futuristic cyberpunk style frame all made out of aluminum and the bike is coming in at about 81 pounds. It has 26 by 4 inch fat tires giving you a lot of cushion but also it comes with full suspension as well. You can find adjustments on the top of the front forks as well as on that rear shock in the back. The Rampage Pro is coming standard with a Shimano 7-speed gear set, which is really nice because you're going to want to be able to pedal this thing. And this thing is so beefy that it can handle a rider up to 440 pounds, which is pretty nuts. It does come with hydraulic disc brakes in the front and the rear, which is a nice touch because with that weight, you're going to want to be able to stop this thing. It's got a really nice bright headlight with both high and low mode up front, as well as a really cool stylized taillight. There is a four inch color display up front with a ton of features and this is where I'm talking about this thing has some features that I've never really seen on a bike before. We'll dive into that in a little bit. And now for the actual power that the Rampage Pro makes. This thing is powered by a Bafang 1000 watt motor and that is coupled with a 48 volt 1176 watt hour battery. Now that battery and motor combo is able to put out a ton of power. However, the charger that's included with it will take a little bit to get Get it fully charged we're looking at about a six hour charge from zero to a hundred percent and with those specs we're looking at an advertised top speed of 32 miles per hour and roughly a 31 to 62 mile range depending on the pedal assist mode that you're choosing now before we get out to test ride this thing i figured it would be easier for me to show you guys what this screen looks like and some of the customizable functionality of this is so down on the right hand side of the removable battery is where you will find the power switch as well as the charging port. If you cannot charge this thing inside of a garage, you can remove the battery and charge it in your home. You can press and hold the power switch here to turn it on and then we have some lighting controls as well as all of the controls to change the pedal assist modes. And this is where you can really dive into some customizable features. So here you can see the odometer. I do have 1.9 miles on it so far. If I tap the plus button, you have a trip function as well as a max speed there. One more gets you into your average speed. And then if I dive into the actual settings of this thing, when you bump up and down through the pedal assist modes, we have one through five, and then you can take it even a step further and customize the sensitivity of each of those five levels. I'm gonna leave this thing stock for today's testing, but as an example, if you find that pedal assist mode one is a little bit too touchy for you, you can dive into the settings and dial back the amount of power that this thing outputs. If you feel like there's not enough power, you can dive into your favorite pedal assist mode and turn up the power. You can also completely lock this thing with a passcode by diving into the settings. So there's a lot of functionality here for customization that I've never really seen on other bikes in the past. So that will be pretty interesting to test out here in the future, but let's see how this thing rides right now. I'm gonna throw on my helmet and we'll take this thing for the first spin. All right guys, starting this testing under a little bridge on a bike path nearby. That way we can sort of take a look at these lights and have a first person view of this thing. So. It is midday right now, but as you can tell, we got low beams over here. If I flick up the high beam switch, very similar to a motorcycle, 
very bright LEDs here, which is a nice touch. On the rear, you will notice this really cool tail light, which kind of feeds into that cyberpunk look of this entire bike. And these are connected to the brakes, so whenever I hit the brakes, it acts as a brake light as well. Now the reason I'm reviewing this bike is because it is drastically different from a lot of other stuff that you see out on the market right now. I see so many electric bikes coming out that have foldable frames, are really small and like commuter style bikes which is cool, those definitely have their place. However, something with a really unique design like this speaks to me because this to me is bordering on the line of like a moped or even a motorcycle. So when we get on this super wide cushy seat here, sort of feels like I'm sitting on a moped or a motorcycle. Now right from the very beginning, I can already kind of tell that pedaling this bike will be fine because we do have that seven speed Shimano gear set on here, but the seating position for pedaling is not going to be ideal. It's not like a mountain bike where you have an adjustable seat. I could come down here and adjust the suspension a little bit, but you're not gonna get any extra seat height out of here. So how the pedals fall underneath your feet, that's not going to change. Now for the record, I have my phone mounted to the handlebars here because I'm tracking this ride via Onyx Off-Road. That way I can get a real top speed and distance readout by the time that we're done. So let's go down to very first gear, no pedal assist, and out into the light. So this bike is fairly heavy, coming in at 81 pounds, but it does have the power to back it up. So. The pedals on this bike, in my opinion, are just kind of like a fallback plan. If the bike completely dies on you, you can still get it home. It is really nice that you can change gears. So there we are in third gear, pushing along at about nine, 10 miles an hour. There is a good chance though that if this bike speaks to you, you're not gonna be riding it like a normal bicycle. You're gonna wanna use the pedal assist or the throttle on this side. I will say that this screen is very bright and easy to read even while I'm wearing polarized sunglasses right now. I have tested a few bikes where they have a screen but they do not work with polarized lenses so that's a nice touch. Now as I sit here, the thumb throttle does not work until I press the plus button, bump it up into pedal assist mode one. Now that throttle is active, as well as the pedal assist of course. So when you're in a lower pedal assist mode, you're probably going to want to be in a lower gear. I'm happy to report that this bike, the Rampage Pro, uses a torque sensor. I talk about the difference between torque sensors and cadence sensors in a lot of my videos. I prefer torque sensors, so if I'm pedaling slow like this right here, it's pretty effortless. And then the more effort that I put into it, the more that motor assists me. Let's go up into pedal assist mode two. Definitely more responsive as we're going up through the different pedal assist levels. Like I mentioned, I can also customize these. So I think what I would do is actually turn up the power of the lower modes because I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little lazy. Now I bet four and five are where we are going to get our biggest bumps, definitely. So I am like barely pedaling here and we're still cruising along at the same speed. And now pedal assist mode five. If I put in even a little bit of effort, this bike really wants to take off. So a torque sensor on a heavier bike like this is a really great move. They're generally gonna be a little bit less laggy than a cadence sensor. So when I stop pedaling, it feels like the pedal assist is not even on. If I pedal lightly, I get a little bit of power. Now let's see here on this straight. <laughs> that torque sensor picks up really quickly. I actually need to shift gears now. Let's go up into top gear. Sorry for the wind noise, by the way. It is super windy out here today. So now pedal assist mode five, seventh gear, cruising right along, easily doing 20 miles an hour. Now back to the ergos of this bike. Like I mentioned, this thing feels more motorcycle-esque than a mountain bike or any other pedal bike. So the seating position is a little bit further forward than I would like. As you can tell, my knees are coming up almost to a 90 degree angle, maybe a little bit more in some cases. If I stand up, feels completely fine. But I do wish that seat height was a little bit taller. That would make it a little bit easier to pedal. And also, the seat is very wide, so I can feel it underneath 
the backs of my legs as I'm pedaling. Definitely not ideal for pedaling, but because this bike does have pedals, that means I can take it on bike paths like this without any issue. But now for how I would typically be riding this bike, we're in the seventh gear, pedal assist mode five. Let's check out this throttle. Power comes on nice and smooth. I really don't even have to be pedaling right now. We'll help it out a little bit. Make the range last a little bit longer today. 24, 25, going straight into a headwind doing 26 miles an hour. So the power delivery feels pretty great. Let's get off of this trail though and into some residential areas. That way it's not so damn windy. Now let's do a little bit of off-roading here. It looks like there's kind of a little bit of a trail here which will take us over to some blockers for the wind, aka houses. So pedal assist mode five, whoa, I really felt it there. So let's start from a dead stop. Pedal assist five, picks up immediately with a light pedal. And then as I put more effort into it, man, I love torque sensors so much more than cadence sensors. Got tumbleweeds, whoo. Suspension on this thing is feeling great. I have not adjusted the tire pressure or the suspension. Up front here is where you have the clickers for the front suspension. And then in the rear you have some clickers as well. This bike is set up pretty great for a rider my size already. I'm about 5'10", 5'11", 175, 180 pounds. This thing feels great. So now we're getting the best of both worlds with full suspension and those massive 26 inch by four inch wide tires. So now, throttle, cruising along on a dirt trail around 20-ish miles an hour, 23, 25, 27, 28. Oh, this thing will definitely be able to go 30 miles an hour. Claim top speed is 32, so. Let's see how it does when we get on to some asphalt again. So typically, a heavier bike like this, even with fat tires and full suspension, generally not great off-road, but this is very comfortable. You'll notice that my voice isn't like bouncing a whole lot because the suspension and the fat tires are doing a lot of that work for me. And here we go, back to some pavement. Let's go down this way. So pedal assist mode five, if I'm just pedaling fairly normally here, even in that top gear, seventh gear, seems like around 22, 23 is about the max until I'm like really pedaling to keep up with the motor. So let's add some throttle into the mix. Now we're on a slight uphill. I can definitely not keep up with the motor anymore with my pedaling. Doing 26, 28, 29, 30, 31. Oh, not gonna get to 32 here. Gotta check out these brakes though. So hydraulic discs in the front and the rear. The front seems a lot more grippier than the rear. Generally on a motorcycle, you're going to have better braking power with the front, but I believe they are the same millimeter in the front and the rear. Here we go again. We shouldn't have a stop sign for a little while, so gets up to 20 very quickly. Can't keep up with my pedaling anymore. 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. And now we've got a little bit of downhill on our side, doing 34, 35, 36. Throttle is wide open, 38, 39, 40 miles an hour. <laughs> I'm gonna have to verify that with my GPS, but that's pretty quick. Of course, we do have the downhill at our back. This bike is heavy, so it's gonna use a lot of that weight to carry itself downhill. That is, uh, Pretty fast, definitely one of the fastest e-bikes that I've tested so far, even though we were going downhill there. Now let's see how this thing does going uphill. A little jump off a curb there. Test out some of the durability of this thing. So a little bit of pedaling to start, mainly throttle on this thing. Like I said, I'm gonna ride this thing like it's a motorcycle. We're still doing 25 miles an hour up a pretty decently steep hill. 
All right, let's test these brakes one more time. Just rear, not bad. Front, way grippier. Front brake is where you're gonna be saving yourself on this thing. The brakes may also need a little bit of time to kind of break in, get the pad seated because this bike is brand new. We're up to nine and a half miles on this thing. So it may take a little while for those things to get extra grippy, but right now they feel okay. I'm just getting completely lost in suburbia out here. Maybe we can find another bike path. Let's go down this grass hill. Woo this thing is like sort of giving me mountain bike slash dirt bike vibes because the suspension does feel really good. Oh, I popped my chain. <laughs> All right, let's see how difficult it is to fix this. Maybe don't jump the bike if you don't want your chain to come off. Actually came off the front sprocket there. That could be a little bit tighter. There's quite a lot of slack in there, but we'll just play it safe. Now, one thing to note about a kickstand in the middle here is that when you back it up, eventually your pedal is going to run into your kickstand like that and you're not gonna be able to move the bike anymore. So just something to note, it would be cool to see that done a little bit differently as you can tell can't move my kickstand there we go just a little design thing that I'd like to see be done a little bit differently now I'm probably going to stay in pedal assist mode 5 and just use the throttle for almost the rest of this testing so I'm really curious to see how long this battery is gonna last we haven't even dipped below the first bar yet and we've done 10 miles now all right, back into some residential areas. It's a little bit, just a little bit less windy out here. I really feel like I'm riding around on like a scooter or a moped. I would say that this thing probably accelerates quicker than a stock Honda Ruckus. You guys know I just did a couple videos on those. You can make them a little bit quicker, but this thing gets up to 20 miles an hour definitely faster than a 49 cc motor on a scooter like that pretty surprised with this thing so far now here is completely flat let's check out our top speed looks like our speedometer is pretty accurate might be one mile an hour faster but I'd say that's pretty damn close so it's 25 miles an hour through residential streets like this. So I could definitely <laughs> be speeding through here with this bike. That 1000 watt motor makes a huge difference over other bikes that generally will come with a 750. I should also mention that this being the Rampage Pro is the top level of bike that they're offering. They're also going to be offering a Kakuka Rampage, not the pro version, and that is going to come standard with a 750 watt motor. But if you want the best of the best performance from this company, this is going to be the bike that you want to look at. We have finally lost one bar of battery at 12.3 miles. So I'm going to keep an eye on that battery throughout the testing, and then once I get to about half, we'll turn around and head back. All right, we're going on a side quest to deplete this battery now. As I'm using my pedal assist and not constantly slamming on the throttle, the battery sort of replenished itself, so it's back to being completely full. It's probably teetering on the edge of that first bar depletion. I put in my maps a little like bike trail type of thing, so we're gonna see where this takes us. It says we've got 10 miles to our destination, 52 minutes. That's with a regular pedal bike though. Guarantee you we cut that time in half. Right underneath the turn signal style light switch, <laughs> we've got a little kind of electronic horn. Oh, squirrel, get out of the way. Let's go this way. Prairie dogs. Prairie dog holes to jump over. Now there's a good chance 
jumping over all this stuff is gonna make that chain come off again, but that's okay. We still got the throttle, so I can fix it if it does come off. Man, typically e-bikes with full suspension and fat tires weighing this much don't feel that great off-road, but this thing feels pretty dang good on these trails. I'm not gonna lie. A little bit of rocks. Ooh, where are we going? I guess this way. All right. We're lost. Man, still powers through a little steep stuff like that. A little bit of pedal assist, a little bit of throttle. Well, with a little bit of shortcuts and all the power of the Rampage Pro, we've made it to our destination in, what was that, like less than 30 minutes when the maps were originally saying about an hour so we have two bars of battery left still riding in pedal assist five lots of throttle all the time riding this thing really fast and we've gone 21.9 miles so i'm going to make my way back home which is probably 10 miles from here <laughs> hopefully we make it and then i'll give you guys some of my final thoughts all right guys, we are back from my first test ride of the Kakuka Rampage Pro and I've got some good news and some bad news. We're gonna start with the good news first. When going into testing this bike, I didn't really have any like crazy high expectations, but it exceeded all of the expectations that I had in place and overall I really like the bike. Now when it comes to a bike that you plan on pedaling a lot, generally you're probably not even going to want to pick up an e-bike in that case, but this thing, like I've said multiple times, is really motorcycle-esque, like a moped or a scooter. And with the ergonomics, it is very comfortable and powerful when riding it the way I like to ride e-bikes, which is essentially like a motorcycle. That that being said though, if you do plan on pedaling this bike, you do have that seven speed Shimano gear set in there. However, the ergonomics of it with the lower seat height and where the pedals are positioned, it's not great for pedaling, but it will get you by in a pinch in case the battery dies or you just need to pedal for some reason. The battery and the 1000 watt motor performed great. We ended up going roughly a distance of 30 miles with a little asterisk next to that. We'll get to it in a second. And after checking my GPS, that top speed was actually pretty damn accurate. It was reading out 40.1 miles per hour when we were going really fast downhill. And the actual readout was about 39.8. So this thing did about 40 miles an hour. Under its own power in a straight line, you can expect roughly 31 maybe 32 if you're a little bit lighter than myself. So, so far all of the advertised specs seem to be accurate. The suspension on the bike was great. It felt awesome when I was kind of off trail a little bit, running through some little single track stuff, up over bumps, hopping off of curbs. That is fully adjustable too, so for a heavier rider, you can bump that up, or if you're lighter, you can turn it down a little bit, make it a little bit softer. As far as the price point goes, I'm not sure what these are going to retail for, so we will see here in the next couple of days, next couple of weeks, whenever the Indiegogo campaign goes live. And then for the other extra features on this bike, like the control pad, the lighting system in both the front and the rear, and just the overall styling, this bike looks really cool, and it is pretty big too. But now for the con, hiding right behind me. We ran into a little bit of an issue at mile 27.5, I believe, so let's check out how that went. Well guys, we were super close. Currently at mile 27 and a half, and we've got a flat rear tire. I don't know if it was from some goat's heads that were out on some of those trails, but yeah, I can see a few little goat's heads sticking in here. So this thing is completely flat. Definitely cannot ride on it anymore, which is a bummer, because I got like, three miles to go. I'm not sure if you could seal this tire and do like sort of a tubeless setup. I don't think you can with this style. But one more feature <laughs> to talk about. If I press and hold the minus button, it will put this bike into walk mode. And now I don't actually have to push the bike. 
Oh no, the tire is coming off. I may have to walk home and then grab the truck to bring this thing back. Dang it. But there is walk mode, so I guess that's nice. So after about three miles of using that walk mode later, I did make it back home. I'm definitely going to have to get a new tube for that tire, possibly a new tire as well because I was pushing it for three miles and the rim was kind of rubbing on the inside. So that's kind of another downside of a fat tire bike, which I never really thought of until now, but because the surface area is a lot wider, you're gonna be picking up more road debris or trail debris. If you guys are not familiar with goat heads, they're basically like these little tiny pokey spikes that grow really low to the ground. So if you step on them, they stick in your shoe. I've had them in all of my mountain bike tires in the past. It's a really common thing out west, but I wish it didn't go flat so quickly. I don't know if it would be possible to put more of a puncture resistant tube in these tires, but because of the wheel, tire, and tube setup, you can't really run a tubeless design here. So that's just something to think about if you're really getting off the trail and kind of riding through some brush or anything like that. If you pick up a nail, a tack, any kind of glass or metal in a tire like this, there's a good chance that you could get a flat. So. That is something that I'm going to have to deal with here in the next day or two, but I'm not gonna knock the Rampage Pro for getting a flat. It could happen with basically anything. So overall, if I was gonna give this bike a score from one to 10, I would actually put it up there pretty high, maybe like a 8.5 to 8.8. Eight. I really enjoyed riding this bike around and I'm kind of bummed that I did get a flat tire because I would like to test it a little bit more. I think all of the specs were advertised correctly. It has some great features. There are a few little things that you could work on like the kickstand and maybe make the brakes a little bit better. I could probably adjust those a little bit, get some more stopping power out of them. But overall, great bike coming from Kakuka. This is the first bike of theirs that I've tested and I'm looking forward to seeing this thing go live on Indiegogo and hopefully they do pretty well. So that's all that I had for today. If you guys have any questions on the Rampage Pro, let me know in the comments down below. I'll try to answer anything as best as possible. Also check out the description for links for the campaign and you can definitely find some more videos and information specs over there. That's all that I had for today. So if you guys are new to this channel, consider clicking subscribe. I make new videos every single week. As always, thank you for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one.